Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's great to be with you. It's my privilege today to bring you some thoughts from our fabulous hymn. And today it's the line, Mild He Lays His Glory By. I asked the Holy Spirit what I should talk about. And he reminded me of my own story and experience of this hymn as a child, really not understanding it and certainly not believing it, through the experience of my teens where I learned to love carols as part of a Methodist church. I think in the hard times then, this carol and And Can It Be held me together. I think of Charles Wesley visiting Sheffield over 40 times, and I think of today when I'm part of a team serving here in Uganda, where this is usually sung as part of a special late Christmas Eve service. Now I love the sense of God's absolute plan for me, to save me and be part of what is called God and Sinners Reconciled. Mild he lays his glory by. The line points to what we would call the incarnate nature of Christ, that he consciously decided, in power, to lay aside his glory, his power, his majesty, and take a human form. Mild he laid his glory by. I love the poetic way this expresses the theological concept that in becoming human, Jesus did not cease to be God, but added to his divinity a complete human nature. This act involved a form of self-emptying. Mild he lays his glory by. The divine attributes of omnipotence, which means he's all-powerful, omnipresent, which means he's everywhere, and omniscient, which means he knows everything, were in some sense veiled or not fully exercised during his earthly ministry. This is not to say that Jesus ceased to be God, but, but that he willingly refrained from fully utilising his divine power, choosing instead to live within the limitations and conditions of humanity, experiencing human life and ultimately, of course, human death. Mild he laid his glory by. It speaks of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 6, where it says, In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. I'm reminded of the words, hands that flung stars into space, to cruel nails surrendered. That's a line from Servant King by Graham Kendrick. And having thought all of that, I then think of why. Why did God do this? God and sinners reconciled is what happened, but why? Because God loves to communicate. Jesus becoming human form is the ultimate act of communication. Allowing a God who is so misunderstood as stern and unforgiving, instead to be revealed as a loving, caring Father who wants to communicate. So let's today communicate with our Father. When I think of communication, I always imagine the throwing and catching of a ball. This image is commonly used to show bonding and communication between fathers and sons in all kinds of films. In it, we throw the ball to our father, who catches it and throws it back to us. When I think of prayer and communication, I think of that throw and catch. Where I throw a topic to God, he catches it and throws it back to me with extra information for me to talk about. I'm going to ask you now to ask God what he wants you to think about as you think about the phrase, mild he lays his glory by. When I did this, of course, he reminded me of my troubled childhood, but also now the complete peace I have in his plan to make God and sinners reconciled. What about you? Now let's return to the words of this hymn. It speaks to the belief in Jesus' complete identification with humanity, his humility, his extraordinary sacrificial love, and the complete mystery of God becoming man, the very heart 
of the Christmas message that the hymn celebrates. Let's finish with that words from Philippians 2 verse 6 again. It says this, Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every tongue here in Uganda, as I sit, every tongue in England, every tongue throughout time acknowledging that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Thank you for listening. May you have a peaceful Christmas.